Welcome, horror fiends, to the darkest corner of the podcast world where we feed your horror addiction. My name is Mike, and I'm joined here with my fellow co hosts, Dylan and Patrick. Hey, hello. Well, I hope you listeners are buckled into your car or sitting on your couch with some ear pods on, your favorite snacks close by, because this episode's going to get weird. And just a real shout out to our boys, Lou and Patrick from Canada with the This Might Sound Crazy podcast. May it rest in forever peace. This episode is dedicated to those kooky little guys with their awkward hugs and tight kisses. Um, so without that, <laughs> we're going to talk about some weird, weird stuff. Strange encounters that we've maybe encountered ourselves. What our listeners have sent us. Also. We're going to talk about a movie called A Fire in the Sky and discuss in detail the Travis Walton alien abduction. Oh, boy. Are you guys ready? Very ready. I don't sound it because I have COVID, but I'm very ready. (laughs) (laughs) I got the goddamn COVID because the aliens. I've been trying to watch this goddamn movie for fucking a week and I just keep passing out due to fatigue. (laughs) (laughs) The vid got Uh, me on. yeah, it did. I, I called it. I was like, Dylan, you need to get tested. You probably got the Rona. He was like, nah. And then you called me like, hell, I think I got it. <laughs> we don't believe in that in Northeast Florida, all right? <laughs> um, but no, yeah, that's, that's one of the reasons why our episode's a little bit late. Dylan's been sick. Two, you, you dorks, or I think mainly Dylan got that hurricane, that Hurricane Adalia. <laughs> that's what i thought it was at first i was like a dahlia like oh no i dahlia like like vidalia onion like no like a dahlia the band no i don't no uh, okay 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 yeah all your booze and jeers can be thrown at me this weekend it's fine <laughs> sorry um, i got sick yeah right sorry you can't see it <laughs> But um, yeah. But welcome back to the show. If you're a new listener, you know things are gonna get weird. Uh, make sure we got, I got a honey bun somewhere stashed in my desk, ready to go. What I would do this. What I would give <laughs> for, a for, a for a honey bun for a honey bun right oh. now. Oh and my god, the little Debbie honey bun too. Oof! Stop, dude. If you're an old time listener, you know this weird obsession. We've tried to be sponsored by the people who make Honey Bun. We will they not said, stop they, until that fucking happens. That's going to be a lifetime they said, goal. They said, "Fuck no." At one point, <laughs> we were really sponsored did. by the we were sponsored by the vending machine at the at the UCF podcasting <laughs> studio. They would just see a dent. They would just see an empty row every week. And they'd go, We're, uh, uh, this is the fourth time they forgot the honey buns. No, they didn't forget. And neither did we. No, <laughs> we so cleared them out. Profits have tripled yeah. in the last month. Oh, man. But, Pat, before we get into our weird stories and sound clips and whatever the fuck else I got planned for us in this episode, what's going on in the <clears throat> weird world of the horror universe? Hey, guys. <laughs> You know the new Exorcist movie that's coming out? I sure do. Believe her? Yeah. We're getting it a lot sooner. You can all thank uh, Taylor Swift for that one. <laughs> you can thank Taylor Swift for a lot, okay? <laughs> I'm not thinking. Oh, no. That. Is Dylan a Swifty? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I, I am nor Swifty nor hater. I am, I, 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 am a, I, I, I respect. Okay? okay. I am, I am a you Taylor respect. Swift hey, respecter. Hey, after, since this news came out, I respect her now, too, because we're getting this movie a lot sooner. Yeah. <laughs> so Listen, this movie how, is how can you compete? Listen, I am actually pissed. I hate this. <laughs> this movie was slotted for a Friday the thirteenth release. Are you kidding I, me? We know, we know. It would have been perfect. The it Exorcist, would've. Ghoulies, Demons, also that's, that's Friday also the thirteenth. The, the week you come here, it would have been perfect. Yeah. I get it. But we get it a week sooner. No, he'd have missed it because he's only here from the 11th and 12th. And then he leaves. And you won't be here because you'll be out of town on the 13th. Hey, hey, Dylan, you know there's a thing called a midnight release. Mm -hmm. That's too late for me, man. We're going to be at Halloween Horror Nights. Midnight release. I'll I'll take it out for Halloween Horror Nights. I guess the cat's out of the bag because I really haven't published that I'm coming down on the show yet. But yeah, you heard it here on this week's episode. I... Dylan's going to, not Dylan, Mike's going to be here for a day. <laughs> <laughs> it's too Breaking God news. damn it. <laughs> but we're, the boys are going to get back together again in the flesh and go to Halloween Horror Nights. 
Yeah. So it's gonna that's going to be fun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We haven't seen each other's bodies in about, what, a year and a half? Almost two well, years and, now? And Dom and Lauren are like, I, we want to go with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I love that. Yeah. Yeah, I told Eddie um, and Eric so that too. I was like, if y'all want to come, you should come with us. Yeah, fuck yeah. The more the merrier, honestly. How I many people fuck feel less. on that, on that no uh, party like a pass. horror junkies party, y'all. We're a yeah, good it's time. It's fucking just the truth. <laughs> We're a good time. You will do and see things you will not regret. I promise you. <laughs> 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 well, I don't know about all that, but uh, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Uh, so, yes, Taylor Swift is re- re- uh, releasing her concert movie on the 13th. No one it asked bro- for this. It broke uh, the uh, AMC. That's where you're fucking wrong, dude. No. I'm not. <laughs> what do you mean nobody asked for it? <laughs> Just go see her live, okay? Clearly, Good luck. Mike, Mike, Good Mike, clearly. luck. <laughs> Mike, clearly people wanted, people are asking for this because it broke, it broke I AMC's know. website. I know. I just, Everything she does breaks whatever it is to try. There is a football stadium is not enough to hold this woman. I don't know. Wh- I don't know where she's going to perform uh, outside of that. No fucking helmet on. Well, hey, I, look, don't, I don't. I, I don't. I live with. I. I, I live ahead. with the Swifter. <laughs> oh, a Swifter. <laughs> my girl. My girlfriend. Has whatever they call them. <laughs> Swifty. Listen, the Swifty. The purple, purple Listen, my, my other. <laughs> my other buddy, Mikey who is an old school New York, Long Island, 80s thrash death metal guy, you know, through and through. (laughs) And he took his daughter to see Taylor Swift. And I can't tell ever since now, every time that I get in the car, it's a Taylor Swift song and he's explaining it. And like, he, dude, I, I literally like, we went to a couple of shows together, one in Tampa and one in Orlando. And it was Taylor Swift on the way there and back for both trips. And I got lessons behind the stories it was behind the music right next to me in the driver's seat it's like the old like, vhs channel listen, series he, <laughs> he has seen a lot of legendary bands he has seen a lot of bands in their fucking prime dude and he said that taylor swift no he said nothing even fucking comes close to taylor swift and he's not <laughs> the only one man who's that comedian andrew schultz the guy that does flagrant the flagrant podcast pat, pat yeah. right yeah, yeah, did you see when he went on with Charlemagne and they were trying to be like, oh no, Beyonce is probably bigger. No, no, nobody's no. bigger than Taylor Swift, probably in the history of music. It's wild to hear. It really is. She well, is the music industry, dog. She is the music industry, and <sighs> she, yeah, I mean, she's a true artist. <laughs> it's hurting Mike so bad that you're. She's a true hurting. artist, dog. <laughs> she wrote. I'm she writes all here. of her songs. That's why she's able to re-record all of her songs to get out of her fucking toxic oh, contract yeah. with that piece of shit managers of hers see this is what mikey's done to me holy shit this is what he's Dylan done to is me on the soapbox right now i'm on my soapbox mikey would be proud <laughs> he would be proud <laughs> fuck john um man. but okay i mean <laughs> <laughs> well yeah he's not the best person ever he's a womanizer <laughs> just yeah, listen to his and, music and, 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 look, and everything uh, look. else well you know yeah uh, but yeah, so if you were looking forward, like me, to going seeing The Exorcist Believer on Friday the 13th... You can still uh, see it on Friday the 13th. <laughs> you can, but you will then have to traverse treacherous <laughs> lands of Swifties. So bring your brass knuckles and mace. Cause they but you will... did it for Barbie. <laughs> you... What's that the difference? Right, I did it for Barbie. You What's the difference? Because right, <laughs> Barbie... <laughs> <laughs> was a cinematic masterpiece. Look, all right, it was. It's my movie. It's so far. It's like I don't know if it's my movie of the year, but it's fucking close. I it, fucking yeah. love that movie. It was yeah. so good. Sp- Spider Man is still my movie of the year. I haven't seen it yet. You Same. guys haven't seen fucking Spider Man yet. I forgot. Well, no, because they edited it. They the the at home releases edited it different than the theatrical release. So I'm kind of upset well, about that. Pardon? Yeah. Yeah, there's a scene. There's a couple of scenes that were in the theatrical re- release that were edited and changed for the at home edition. I did not know that. So, anyways, moving back onto the horror world of things, well, Patrick, and the horror and the music. Oh, keeping it, we're getting a saw musical. <laughs> now, my happen. only question, <laughs> my only question. Now, hear me out. Is yeah. it done by the same production that did Evil Dead the musical? There's an Evil Dead musical? Fuck yeah, yeah there's an Evil that? Dead the musical. No. There's actually 
I don't know if it's in Maine or New Hampshire. I think it's in New Hampshire. There for in October there there's a production company doing an Evil Dead the musical and I am really debating on driving my ass see, to New Hampshire. Okay. <laughs> that's that's uh, that idea is on brand with Evil Dead. Yeah. Cuz they Saw, even have a splatter <laughs> zone. Yeah. Saw what? Sure. Do you want to sure. play a game? <laughs> yeah. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> I don't know why. With Michael McDonald in it? <laughs> yeah. Do you want to play, wanna play a game? game? <laughs> okay. And then, and then. No, no. <laughs> and then someone else. Oh, they're trips <laughs> in our mind. <laughs> like, Listen. Listen, it's it, it's all takes place in that fucking room. Why not? That saw could be a stage play. Why not a musical? If they did Spider Man, the musical, what's wrong with Saw? That's true. I mean, I'm actually stoked for it. if it has like practical effects and they have a splatter zone where like they spray you with like blood water. I'm here for it. Is it going like, to be in got- New York? Is it going to be or is it going to be in like some fucking? Seller of a pizza place, <laughs> you know, and like in you're Albany. Questioning you sitting down in this chair, you're gonna get fucking tetanus. Yeah, exactly. It's going around. I mean, so I'm down for it. It's bro. gonna I mean, be. It's gonna be performing. Hold on. Starting oh. September 16th, 2023. Mm-hmm. September at the AMT Theater. The AMT, the AMT? Theater. With a yes. T or a C? Amped. A-M-T. Hmm, okay. Where's that at? And Midtown Theater District. It sounds like New York. Sounds, uh, yeah. Hurry up, Ticketmaster. Where's it going to be? <laughs> Hold on a second. Uh, it's in New York. It's going to be in New York. Yeah, so Mike, you can go see it. I'll go see it. The AMT Theater is in New York. You. It's in the city. When this, w- once you said Midtown, I knew it was going to be in the fucking city. Yeah. Look, I'll go see it um, with you. So fuck yeah, dude. I'm going to go see that. Fuck Look, yeah. I need, I need no reason to hop my ass on a plane and get, go you anywhere. You don't. You bring your sweet I cheeks don't up have here. A, literally, I, like, I'll just be like, I'm going to be gone. Going to go see it. <laughs> well, I want to see, well, a, I you, see you guys an actual have... Broadway play so bad. I want to see. They're doing Sweeney a, Todd right now. I know. I want to see Sweeney Todd. I want to see this Wicked. So Apparently, complete. according to a lot of people, there's a Back to the Future play Is on there? Broadway, and apparently it's we incredible. We can check it out. I would so go see theater. that. Are you kidding me? Come on now. So um, we will post the link in our show notes about this Saw musical because that's fucking awesome. Yeah. And if it has any, if it has any practical effects, which normally they do, um, I'm going to lose my fucking <laughs> mind. Well, Dude, yeah, I mean, shit. Be like Even a if the acting concert. is shit poor, if the fucking... If, yeah, exactly, Dylan. Exactly. If this is if this is like yeah. a Guar concert, I am fucking so for it. Yeah, I mean, shit. There's a song but, uh, for every trap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, Oh, dude. God, dude. Uh, Billy coming out. I need Billy to come out on the fucking tricycle just singing. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, want to play a game. <laughs> speaking I don't want to play a game. <laughs> <laughs> speaking of just, like, cool things, like, living in a city um, like New York um, is really cool. When I go to the subway every day, guys, um, I am faced with fucking... Um, these televisions that do promo images and they have this really cool the nun 2 sequence that's fucking sick oh um, and i saw it too in diablo like i'm sure you guys all saw the diablo i saw the promos. diablo one it's like 3d it's like, right it yeah. looks real and, yeah and then there was the one that the fires in canadia were burning and it was like orange as fuck here someone caught a picture of like the sky with the diablo like hell is opened up or something with the background oh, everyone's like man. that's so sick that is um, sick. But it's cool to live in a city and actually get to see that kind of promo finally yeah. versus just being a billboard or like the, you know, what you see on the internet now. Yeah. We don't, we don't have we're so We're finally getting <laughs> Blade Runner levels of advertisement. Fuck, and I'm here for it. We're finally I'm getting here it. here for it. Yeah, finally. I've been waiting. All I want is that tall neon woman to like caress me. Boy, do I ever. <laughs> Boy, do uh, I ever. Anything else, That's Pat? what I need right now. Anything else lately? I don't think there's been much that's coming out lately. Um, that's big circuit news for the horror world. Uh, um, not that I'm aware of. <clears throat> I haven't seen any release. Oh, I got something. Um, if you guys played Day- Dead Before Daylight or Dead by Daylight, I can't remember that's why. 
Yeah, Dead by Daylight. Um, they just released, as you all know in the horror community, they're very big on bringing in IPs to play as either survivors or killers. Yeah, we've, right been, now, we've been playing it. <laughs> yeah, we've been playing it. Right now, you can fucking buy uh, Ripley and the Xenomorph. So uh, Both me Pat and, Mike and I did played that. the other night, and it was absolutely terrifying to be <laughs> chased by the Xenomorph. Um, and it's really cool because it, like, it's kind of like an OP character as the killer. But they give you like sensor flamethrowers, and they ha- it has all like the analog noises from Alien in it. Oh, so really okay. fucking cool! I, oh, this game I, never fucking disappoints. We were talking Mike, about I, it. What's up? I, I didn't tell you after we played the game. My neighbor came up and he's like, "Is everything okay?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we gotta play tonight, it, dude. He's like, was... he's like, there was yelling, cursing. <laughs> I was Bro, just making sure you guys are okay. I'm scary, like, oh yeah, man. no. I'm, I'm, I just, I, he just, I was like, I just got a PS5. I've been playing video games. He's like, well, can you just keep it down? I'm like, yeah, uh, sorry. Fuck off. Um, <laughs> I'm not I, I, I just think that Dead, <laughs> Dead by Daylight that. has consistently um, been a favorite of mine because of like one of like the IP that they create. You, know, you have Freddy, you have Michael and the Jigsaw Killer and et cetera, et cetera. Um, but they've also started like adding like this weird story backline, uh, background events to it all. Like the kind of like, breaching like what's happening in this world and everything and me and pat were talking about when we were playing last night and or the other night and it's funny to see games like the friday the 13th game or the evil dead game or even now the texas chainsaw master game that kind of like mirror the style of gameplay where you have like a group of four to eight people that are like the survivors and then you have someone who's the killer stalking that prey um and when it comes to it, like I've have I have played everything except for the new Texas Chainsaw Massacre game, and I still keep going back to uh, Dead by Daylight. It is it's so much don't, fun. It's don't they be have a leather face? Uh, yeah, don't they have a leather face in that game too? Yeah, in yes. Dead by Daylight, yeah, they do. They do. So it's like okay, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, it's all. I mean, I mean, there's they, more. They, they... There's more in the. Go ahead, Dylan. Yeah, no, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre game, Massacre game is different, um, but I, I don't see any horror game in that style usurping or topping Dead by Daylight. They've got a str- no. stranglehold on it, and as long as they keep doing... I mean, everybody's very happy with it. Uh, my brother uh, is a massive Dead by Daylight player, and he's very, very good at it, which I didn't know you could be good at a game like that. Oh, I'm, too, I'm phenomenal at it as I'm, the killer. Yeah, you are, because <laughs> we played the other night, and I don't know about, I know y'all had fun. <laughs> I don't know if I had fun, because it's just like, I can't look around and fix this generator, and when that little mini game pops up, mm-hmm. I, I don't, I, I, I miss it every time, and it blows up, and that's because I'm too busy looking around for Mike. <laughs> and then I literally was fixing the generator, and I turned the camera around. And you were like, you were five feet behind me, creeping up behind me. <laughs> you didn't say anything over the fucking headset or nothing. Uh, and I just m- literally, like, I shit in reverse. Like, I, <laughs> I shit into my stomach. So, like, no. it's so, I, I don't like the feeling of being chased. I don't even like people following me up and down stairs. I fucking <laughs> hate that shit. I'm just like, like dude, go ahead of me. I don't want to, I don't want this. Mike you turns know, into like, the fucking shark from Draws. He's like, dun, dun, dun. <laughs> it's because I like to play as ghost. Head. I like to play as Ghostface in the game. In Ghostface, you get to crouch. Uh, a lot of a lot of the other killers, you don't have that ability. So you could just like crouch and walk around, and no one can see you. And then you just run up on a motherfucker last minute. Oh god, um, dude! But yeah, too much. so if you guys want to play with us. Totally hit us up. I'm totally down to play with you guys. Yeah, with, with you all. It's a fun game. Uh, I think even though Dylan doesn't want to play, we're gonna make him play, and we're gonna live stream all of us playing um, as survivors because wow. that's what me and Pat did. And we why can't y'all force so me to do something fun? fun? Why can't you force me to do Never. something fun? This we're, is fun? We're taking you to get pizza fries at Black Magic Pizza when we come when I come down. So that's something fun. We're eating a lot when you come. We're down. gonna eat so much when I come down. It's, oh boy, it's what gonna a break be from the ridiculous. Finally, a break from the routine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, if you guys want to play with us, I'll drop our fucking usernames if you know the guys are cool with that, or if you want to just reach out to us on 
our socials and we'll set this up is how we, something. This is how we invite a stalker to our lives. <laughs> Hell yeah, brother. Let's go. I want to play, I play with the horror junkies, guys. Yes. <laughs> yes. I feel like I know them so well. If I could just crawl inside their skin, maybe I can get to know them even better. Maybe if I make a suit out of them and I can walk around, people will think I'm them. <laughs> Yeah, no. If you're like that, please don't. Please, don't. please don't play games with us. <laughs> don't do it. All right. Be normal. Um, besides <laughs> all I don't that think, I don't stuff, think, I, don't, I don't think people like that are self aware enough. <laughs> <laughs> wow. anyway, um, yeah. But moving on, what do you guys want to do first? Should we talk about some like you know maybe personal strange encounters or maybe some third party like stories that we know offhand and can share or do you want to jump into the movie and this whole alien abduction and then go to strange encounters like what do you guys want to do first let's do strange encounters first and then we'll yeah. go to the movie cool anything personal so, with you too so let's see strange encounters you know i've been promoting i think we made a pretty cool little uh movie night thing with the strange encounters with the 911 call and all these weird creepy things and i think the premise behind this and i and no mind is this going to be um just a one and done. I think this is going to be like an ongoing type of thing that I want to put into the show, whether it's just mainly on social media or we like do one offs on TikTok and shit like that. Right. But the idea is that more and more with this digital age where people are able to capture weird things that they observe in the universe. Right. And I think for me and mainly for me, and I'm sure you guys too, and our listeners, I love watching trail cam videos, right? Yes. Yes, sir. I think things like that where they're like left alone in the woods, not being touched, and you just come back and you see the footage and you see some weird shit. Um, personally, I've had a couple weird things in my world, in my life. Um, I've moved around a lot when I was growing up, and I used to live in this good old place called Perry, Florida. The fuck now, is if, that? <laughs> Now, Perry. Perry, Florida, is if you're going towards Tallahassee on the Panhandle, it's Gross. about left, about the west, about left, <laughs> um, it's about left, it's about left, it's about left. <laughs> it's like a small town that is west of Tallahassee, out in the middle of nowhere. I'm talking, okay. bro. They had a Kmart, and everyone's favorite color was camo. Oh, <laughs> and th- yeah, it's one of those places. But we used to have to go to school at the crack of fucking dawn. I'm talking 5.30, 6 o'clock time. Dark as shit in the middle of nowhere. And I was young, right? And we... Uh, we lad. When Mike was small. I was a wee lad. <laughs> um, and I could swear that every time we went to the bus, like you can just look at the sky and there was just these things that were hovering all the time. And I think that's what truly pushed me onto this weird world of like obsessing I want with to the believe. unknown. I want to believe exactly the X Files. Like I want to believe because I'm seeing things that are hovering. And my brothers, they can confirm. Like we would tell our dad and stepmom, like we saw some weird shit this morning walking through the goddamn field that we had to walk <laughs> through to go to the bus. You stop. guys were on drugs. <laughs> that's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> or, but then going further, like I'm telling you guys, right. like we would spend the night in a tent outside and we would just hear random things. And it wasn't like animal noises and it wasn't like, you know, people fucking with you because there wasn't many people that lived out there. Like we had lived on a lot of land with maybe a neighbor down the road, three miles type of shit. So right. just weird shit would happen all the time at the house, whether it was, you know, the TVs going static and weird, you know, the radio going. It, you know what it was? What? It was Jump. you from the future. Just fucking with yourself. <laughs> <laughs> if only. Um, but that was my introduction to like weird shit happening to me. And right. it goes further where when I moved um, in with my friend Aaron Carter. Yes, that's his real name. Did he beat um, Jack? <laughs> I swear to God, he was my best friend in high school, and his name was Aaron Carter. Uh, I lived with him for a little while, and I was dating some chick, and we did a Ouija board in her bedroom. Idiot. Ah! And nah, I was like, here, nah. enter, enter it your up. white behavior. <laughs> um, and I tell you, when I tell you guys, like, some weird shit went down, right? And I went back to my buddy's house, and I have never felt like I've been watched so supremely before. Like, I felt like 
there was just a presence always around me. Like I couldn't go to sleep. That's like, how I, I felt just... after watching a uh, skin rink. <laughs> <laughs> but like, it was just like this weird presence. Like I never saw anything. Right. I never right. saw any shadow or dark figure standing around me, but I s- always felt, especially when the lights were off and I was in my room by myself, like something was there. Something was lurking in the da- darkness, and I could just feel again. Like you can, you know, when you're being watched. Like you could feel it. That hyper, you know, primate area of our yeah. brain that just like activates. You're like, I'm not a hundred percent sure if I'm alone right now, and I need to be hypersensitive. And that was that was the weird things that happened to me. It was a it's a weird time. A little bit I of a ghouls. buzz, would you say? Like would you get a buzzing feeling, like a high. <laughs> No, yeah. not, not, not necessarily. Well, yeah, kind no. of. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Like yeah, you, no, your I, parasympathetic nervous system is starting to react. Yeah. And you're in fight or flight mode. You know? Yeah. When this is when you were like, kid. This is when you were a kid. This is when I was a teenager. Yeah. I, I've always seen what you people would describe as shadow figures when I was a kid. Right. So oh, I dude. always when I I don't dude, know if I had yeah, like sleep, sleep paralysis, paralysis when I was a kid. I did, uh, but yeah. But I would I would to this day I can recall like being in my bed and just looking down the hallway because I used to sleep with the door open when I was young mm-hmm. and just seeing like some like figure whether it was like a maybe an animal or something just like coming down the hallway and I just could it's not skinwalker get out of bed. Um, but yeah, I've always had weird shit happen to me, bro. I get that. I've had I've had experiences <laughs> where I was a kid. And like you'd go into a room that you've never been in before, in a house that Real, you have dude. been in before, yeah. and you get this feeling of like, and it's just like it's dark, and like you've never been in there before, and all, and you just get this weird vibe that somewhere in the darkness of that room, something is looking right back at you. Oh yeah, and it and it it it, it's, it, it makes your body buzz, mm-hmm. and it starts to give you like. This weird feeling, and you're a kid. You don't know how to process that. You don't know what that means, and you just kind of ignore it. But I've definitely had that feeling, and the the shadow people thing. I have a very vivid memory of a of an experience I had when I was in. I must have been in eighth grade or ninth grade, where I was sleeping in my in my room next to my brother's room. Uh, there were I had skylights, and I remember waking up to this tall, tall figure in the corner of my room and what he did uh, and I was sitting there looking at him and I felt this, I felt this kind of strange, like half fear, half curiosity. And I was just like, I'm seeing things, but then it lifted. You can't see cause of the narrow screen, but it lifted its arms up and mm-hmm. then started to flap really slow, like a bird. And it's, uh, and it was a bird. <laughs> it, no, no, the fuck, and the fuck, joking, no, it I'm wasn't. Uh, but, but it's it's um, the sleeve of whatever it was wearing was draping over. It looked like you know, it, so it started flapping faster, and then it flew up and took off into my skylights. Oh my! God. I'll never Man. fucking forget fuck that. that. Not to fuck mention, that. me and my brother upstairs had a bathroom that separated us, and my brother and I used to fucking have like weird night visions and stuff mm-hmm. and my brother woke up one day or was in his room hanging out and all because we had french sliding doors that separated our rooms from the bathroom there was a door into the bathroom from my room and then a door into his room from the bathroom and he heard one day uh, late at night because he would stay up and play video games he heard on the door and he no. slides the door open, and I'm standing there asleep. <laughs> and uh, he oh, swears man. he tells us the he, he tells the fucking story. He still tells it. And then he was just like, it, it, apparently, I started mumbling some shit, and I went back to bed. What the f- absolute fuck? Oh man, if I could get Gino and Randy <laughs> on here, they could tell you Hold about on. how uh, <laughs> the Dylan's haunted stories. Yeah, Randy's convinced I'm haunted because I used to sleep. <laughs> I used to sleep on tour, and no matter where Randy was, I'd find him and try to kill him in my sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I literally woke up to like being kicked in the chest once and Randy had his fists up like this. He's like, what's wrong with you, man? And I was like, what are you talking Thanks. about? He's like, it's Dylan, he's haunted. <laughs> <laughs> so 
Michael's doing that thing again. <laughs> yeah, no, I swear to God, dude. Like, yeah, no, they'll, they'll, if I could ever get them on the show, they will tell you about Haunted Dylan. I love um, that. We need that to happen. We need that experience. Yeah. yeah. Haunted no. Dylan. No, just but call them I, right now. No, I, I personally don't think I've had any like life altering experiences with the unknown. I know my grandfather, uh, both my grandfathers have um ghost and extraterrestrial my uncle mike has seen a ufo twice oh, is that, is that he's a, a stra- conspiracy mike is that conspiracy, conspiracy theorist mike. no <laughs> yeah. listen mike mike is a straight shooter through and through he is a straight shooter um and my uncle charlie he saw an s ufo a fucking night, what he, an s ufo a submerged uh a submerged unidentified flying object that basically if it goes in the water it's now an s ufo or some shit like that the uh, classification told, uh, levels of this is wild to me sometimes. Um, yeah, uh, no, dude, I'm telling you. Like, so, and, and they bring it up in this, and they bring it up in um, not the movie Fire in the Sky, but the documentary that me and Mike watched about it afterwards, about someone said, why don't they go after the, the fancy city men, the, all the smart people, and why do they keep coming after, like, simple country folks? Yeah. You know? And it's like, good, good question. Because a lot of people, that the only people I know that have seen things and are brave enough to tell it are like good, honest, simple country folk. And maybe that's why. Because yeah. they, they, they should be believable. Maybe they don't. But if you watch Fire in the Sky, that is not the case. <laughs> that's not the case. Um, I got one more. And then, Pat, you can jump in. Okay. So, I will tell a story that was absolutely fucking terrifying. It was one night when we were in back in Perry, teenagers, and we were all alone. It was me, my brother, my other brother, and my sister, all just hanging out. Middle it was of the, the night. first time I even noticed you know you had siblings like that. <laughs> oh, yeah. I got a brother, a stepbrother, a half-sister, and a sister. Um, Goddamn, a full deck of cards. Right I got there. a full deck of cards. Goddamn, uh, so you meet Gabrielle uh, if, in Orlando. I may ask her to come out to, and hang out with us. She's like 22, cool. yeah. 23 now. She's cool. Yeah. She's, she's a weirdo like us. Oh, okay. hell yeah. um, but we were in this mobile home and all of a sudden in like the far distance, mind you, we are all together hanging out. We were watching a movie. We just hear kind of what Dylan talked about, like a stomping, like a, a loud stomping noise. And we we're like, what the absolute shit was that? So my brother, the eldest of us all went and checked it out and like he didn't, it stopped. And then we we're like, okay, fuck it, whatever. Maybe we we're just freaking ourselves out. We all go to bed. So in the middle of the night, we're all sleeping, and you just hear, again, on the roof above us, what sounds like footsteps, just like, you know, it wakes you up, because like that's how loud it was. And we're like, what the fuck? And we literally opened the blinds, and you just saw, like, red eyes. And it was, like, immediately gone. All of us, to this day, believe that either where we were living was some type of fucked burial place, because, again, it's in the middle of, it was literally the middle of nowhere. If you look up Perry, Florida, I'm pretty sure they got a Walmart like five years ago. And <laughs> all of the weird shit, when we would go out into the woods, the weird shit we would find. When I lived in Ocala, and this is one more, and I, I promise, Pat, you, it's your turn. Oh, uh, you're good. We used to go out in what's called Moss Bluff in, in Ocala, which is going out towards the National Forest. It's a point of the road where the roads become no longer paved. There's no street names. It's all dirt roads in the backwoods. We have, I have stumbled upon like old, old, old grave sites. I mean, like, I don't even know what era. You're talking maybe 1800s, 1700s, like just graves sunken in. And we all were like, we got out of the car and we went and checked it out. And as we were all together, again, a group of us hanging out, we just see something walk in front of the headlights of the car. And I tell you, I, we, all of us ran so fucking fast to the area where the light was crossed, but and drove off, and we turned down the back road, and then we stumbled upon what looked like to be some type of weird carcass. Now, if it was an animal, was it a human? We have no idea. Uh, because we drove the fuck out of there as fast because it was just too weird, too many weird. Like, found this weird graveyard, like makeshift with graves st- sunken in, meaning they weren't dug in too deep. And then something walked in front of the car lights, and then we stumbled upon like a, this dead thing, bro. I have weird some some weird ass stories from my time in Ocala and Perry. I believe uh, it. And this is just 
just Ocala? scratching the surface of the shit. I fucking that fully I've believe it, dude. Yeah, no, I fully fucking believe that, man. And I mean, who's listen? The, the fucking the 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 now famous uh, deep debriefed UFO video that everyone's talking about, the black and white one. That mm-hmm, was yeah. that was off the coast of Jacksonville, Florida. Like it's because we live in the up, penis like, of the country. Yeah, like. <laughs> it, why not you know yeah. strange fucking shit's happening all the goddamn time well, and I, you know my dad used to say or he, he, he would tell me all the time because my dad's a you know he's a he, he's a reformed white tail buck hunter and a current <laughs> turkey hunter and he goes out there four in the morning in the woods yeah. in the dark oh and he God. goes dude when you're sitting out there against a tree you can hear everything Mm-hmm. And you'll hear something make a sound you've never heard before. You can hear every twig snap because there's nothing out there. You're yeah. not next to nothing. There's no you know, cars, by no planes. You're literally, it's you and whatever the fuck is lurking in the and darkness. And it is pitch fucking black dark. And I told him, you can have that. <laughs> there ain't nothing once. in the woods I want to shoot that bad. I've done that once and I will never do it again. I did it, it once. It is fucking terrifying. Well, yeah. No, no. I just, mm-mm. no. No, 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 no. Not after the movies I've seen. <laughs> <laughs> Patricio, what kind of weird shit have you encountered or heard stories of encounters? So when I was like eight or seven, it was my first time my parents took me to Puerto Rico. I was, it was me and my cousins were hanging out. It was dark at night. They had a chicken coop, so we were playing with the chickens and stuff. So I was chasing this one chicken <laughs> into the woods and shit. Well, there's your problem. And I right saw there. for what it was now, problem. I guess it is a UFO, but it, I was like, what the, f-? I looked like a shooting star to me. Mm-hmm. Could have been, <laughs> who knows? I want to believe it was a UFO because it stopped midway and then vanished. Yeah. Shooting Sounds stars like don't do that. UFO don't shit. Stop. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> shooting stars and then don't stop uh, the, 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 the same thing happened to me actually recently, like uh, two years ago, I was <laughs> hanging out with my friend Kalen. We were outside smoking a cigarette and it, the same thing, green light stopped and then, and it is, Right in the middle of when everything was being released and everything, like the stories were being told about, like government uh, being like these the are Navy official coming out and being like, hey, yeah. like we are seeing shit. The Air Force would literally like, happened to us. I look, I look back at him. I'm like, you just saw that, right? He's like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> See, I love it when you have someone yeah. near you. They're like, it's like good, to, good. To I was like, I, that's a, That was exactly my reaction. I'm like, good. You saw it. Fuck yes. I'm not crazy. <laughs> no, it's great. It's like, but uh, I mean. Fire yeah. in the sky. They had fucking. They were rolling deep, and nobody believed yeah. their ass. Deep. They were deep. They were like six four, of six them. of them motherfuckers. And they all yeah. and like yeah, yeah no, we'll get to we, that. But like yeah, it, 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 people yeah. just want to believe what they want to believe, and they and then and they I agree. Well, yeah. And I mean, but I mean, the, the shooting stars don't stop and then go. No, <laughs> no. I, no. I, I I believe you when you say you saw. What no. you saw. That, when I was younger, I was trying to rationalize what I saw. I was like, yeah. that could have been a shooting star, but because that's how I work. I'm like, I'm always a skeptic. I'm like, this or this, yada, yada. Brains place tricks on you a lot of times when it comes to shit like that. I have a bunch of like Ouija board fucked up stories too that I rationalize with myself being like, ah, it's probably just. Like, I have none. My mind playing, <laughs> my mind Pat, playing tricks on me. Pat, you were at the ghost hunter thing we did at the old job, the old uh, place I worked. Did you come yeah. to that? Yes. That was fucking weird. So that, that is freaky. an old episode. On the yeah. podcast, we did. We I used to work in Orlando, really downtown Dylan. Orlando, um, <laughs> at an escape room in an old building, and we knew it was haunted. When I worked there by myself, some weird shit used to go down. Yeah, and we became friends with like some local ghost touring, um, company, and I was like, you know, can you send one dude? Let's do an investigation. We'll interview him, um, and we did that, and then we spent. We were there till like three in the morning. Yeah. And when I tell you that we encounter some weird shit, I mean, like, you know, the whole flashlight thing that Zach Baggins does, where, like, they'll put a flashlight on the, on the ledge and it's, like, ever so slightly disenlodged. So, like, the slightest touch will turn it on and turn it off. You know what I'm talking about, Dylan? Said, well, you're talking about some kind of device? Yeah, like the flashlight, like the flashlight. device. Oh, so, yeah. No, they, they, they do that on this, uh, on, this, on this thing I got on the TV right now, the Watcher. The yeah. Buzz so we guys, they do the thing with the flashlight. Yeah. Which so I didn't know was a that. thing. I didn't oh, yeah. know that we was a did thing. That. We, we did and that. Yeah. The amount of interaction we had with whatever this entity was was, dude. It was it was wild. Listen, like it was, was the, 
that experience what freaked me out was the whole what what Issa was experiencing. Yeah, my wife. Well, my I wife was, like, was experiencing. Yeah, yeah it was very wife. weird. It was so uh, you don't have to get like super personal. There was a death in the family, and this person was claiming to be that person. And that when like typically what they'll do is like they'll have you like you know how to turn the flashlight on at the letter that begins with your name, and they go like A, B, C. D, etc. This stopped on M. All right. Yeah. And they said, "All right, what's the next letter to your to the next letter in your name?" A. They'll mind you. The flashlight turns off once it's done the first choice, and then it goes A. Turns back on. Does it again? It goes to X. And the individual who had passed away, his name was Mac. It was something longer, but Max is what he went by. And it was just. Bro, it was a weird like that, you could feel was, like there was like moment, this conjoint. Like I think I was crying. Yeah, like, yeah just you out and of Issa were just started crying. I but, felt very emotional and got fucking goosebumps up the ass. Yeah. it was uh, fucking that, weird, that, dude. That, it was that, a only at that weird moment. fucking time. Yeah, and it's uh, something that I think I recorded. I had like yeah. microphones running high gain the entire night to catch, and we caught like weird disembodied voices. Like we caught all kinds of shit. It was a. I want to do it again. Kind of what yeah. Hard Lore does, like they, they go to the they go to the fest out in um I think Oklahoma. Am I right? Well, they did they did um, Furnace Fest too because that um, yeah Furnace that fest. place is um also haunted. The 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 so I would the love to do another ghost. Yeah, that was fun. It Look, was, I live um, in one of the most haunted cities in America, if not yeah, besides true. Savannah, like the most haunted. Yeah, like, yeah, I did. I uh, when I lived in Palaka, I did the ghost tour in uh, St. Augustine. Dude, you, I mean, when they're when they construct buildings downtown, like an old yeah. historic downtown, before they do anything, the um, St. Augustine Historical Society has to come and like make sure they're not building on top of like bones and corpses. Yeah, like yeah. the all of downtown. Like every time they dig it up, they find human remains of people Always, that were like yeah. that are like buried underneath the city. Like. <laughs> It's fucking wild, dude. A lot, like, it, it, there's a lot of haunted shit. My grandfather on my mom's side used to take me as a kid around downtown to all places that he had like ghost experiences at. Like, you know, he, <laughs> I love that. Yeah, no, my and, and my grandfather is was as honest as honest could get, and he would tell stories about how he would do random jobs in houses downtown and. You know, he would see, you know, girl, women in old clothes by graveyards and like, old, like women in old clothes and houses that he would work on and stuff. And like, there is an insanely rich history reaching back to the 1400s in St. Augustine. Yeah. Like there, no, are, yeah, there is wild. crazy, crazy shit that happened in this town. And I mean, before well, it was ever settled, during while it was settled. Um, yeah. No, definitely. I mean, yeah, the lighthouse, uh, my great grandfather, my great great grandfather. Um, Jimmy Swain, who I get his, I, my middle name is his last name. So my middle name is Swain and he so was a know. lighthouse keeper. He was the lighthouse keeper here in St. Augustine. Um, the big for, one or the, for, the light. Yeah. You know, I went to that lighthouse, got, but, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, my grandmother, my great, great grandmother said that she didn't see anything. She said that, you know, ah, oh, it's not that haunted. You know, I don't believe in any of that. But that <laughs> it's not that she, haunted. Apparently, she <laughs> apparently she was. Uh, you know, the the ghosts were smart to stay stay away from her. Um, but I mean, yeah. even even uh, the restaurant that my family owns, the upstairs is haunted, and uh, for Let's some see. reason, that ghost don't like women. We think it's a we think it's like my <laughs> grandma Mimi or something. I have to ask my dad, but she didn't care for other it's women. The, it's the ghost of it's it's the ghost of Andrew Tate. <laughs> oh my no, god! No, no. Unfortunately, that ghoul is still it's amongst the, ghost the living. Of gam gam. Yeah, yeah. No. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, no. I mean, if y'all if y'all want to come down and and uh, yeah, listen, uh, see what we can conjure up. It's just that when the Ouija board comes out, you got to give me 500 feet. I have to let the entities know we're that not I wasn't a part of it. We're not going to do a Ouija board. There's no need for a Ouija board. There's Thank not. God. Those were, I've those never were, fucked those with one and I never will. Days. I've yeah, never fucked with one and I never will. You can't, you can't I, pay me look, to do it. You're lucky. <laughs> Here's yeah, the thing. I know. No, I'm not lucky. I'm smart. People <laughs> like to delve into the things that they don't truly understand, right? Because, yeah, you can be a skeptic and be like, you know, what Zach Baggins does on the television is edited for TV production to get TV views and all this stuff. But 
we know that matter cannot be created nor destroyed. So when someone dies, that energy that's in their body can't be destroyed. So it has to transfer to something else. And it's within that transference that I think things can latch on to something like a house. Uh, I don't, I don't like to say that cars can be haunted, but you know, sure. Well, like, seen Christine? Yeah. Have you seen Christine? Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, I say that. Then I, I think of our boys in ghost garage, Tyler uh, up in the fucking, um, in Oregon where they fucking usually like do ghost car haunting videos and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> check them out. Please do. It's hilarious. But to, we don't know. Like it's just like, we don't know. We didn't know about aliens. I mean, to say right. that there was, there isn't this, you know, there's no other organic life forms out in this universe when there are right. tens to billions and billions of, you know, galaxies in this system. Like, how do we know we're the only carbon based life? Form? And who's to say that just because we think that the only life form that can it live organically is carbon based, who's to say there's not in, you know, non carbon based life forms that are out there living amongst the stars and they have yeah. hyper technologies and that they're. Um, exactly now this is not me saying that the egyptians can't build the pyramids because that's a total fallacy and it's not true because there right. are videos that disprove everyone's theory about aliens coming in helping the egyptians mm, build the pyramids, pyramids because pyramids. Yeah. they were well capable and so were the mayans to build their own things own pyramids. Mm. but uh, the no, question Dylan, the question i promise I wanted... you we can go offline mm. and talk about it because nine times out of ten it becomes it the storytelling comes from a white perspective oh, uh, an eastern a western perspective saying that these people are incompetent in their building mechanics because oh, they they're are not, not competent no 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 i promise you you listen it's just like with like reptilian conspiracy theories it's <laughs> ground rooted in anti-semitic foundations i yep. dude it gets it you don't you have to dig deep i promise you i'm not pulling this out of my ass it's there but this sounds like some liberal bullshit to me. I'm going to believe. <laughs> I'm going to believe uh, that the aliens did it. That's no. what I'm going to believe. How are you going to get uh, rock but, from a river 500 miles away yeah. all the way back to the pyramids? There's to literally build a guy who does it on YouTube. Who does and what? He literally, who shows how to move giant rocks like of that capacity? 500 miles. Any, yep. Yep. I don't the Vikings it. move their boats the same way. I don't. They would it. cut down trees and pull and put them down and put the boat on top and pull with the rope. That many rocks, that rocks. far away. How long did yeah, that take? This it took a long time, didn't we're it? Get, we're jumping off. We're getting hairy. This discussion will be for another podcast. Yes, I promise but, you guys. But I have a question. Go ahead. On the theory of what are aliens and where they come from, do you do you, are you on the subscribe of the they're from a different planet or interdimensional? I think it's both because I think okay. that I to think. Do you that, think they're future? They're they're future versions of us. And they came down to make sure certain things happen in our no, time period? No, I don't think that. Dylan, you? Okay. I think, well, here's the thing. I'm going to bring up my Uncle Mike again. <laughs> Uncle Mike <laughs> told me a theory <laughs> when I was a wee lad, and I thought it was silly. And then the more I think about it, at the very least, it would be a very killer premise for a movie. And I think they kind of already did it. Um, has anyone seen the, the, the hit movie, uh, Knowing? With Nicholas Cage. Yeah. Yep. I, we, we, we have. <laughs> yes. Well, um, it turns out that, um, you know, with the aliens and Adam and Eve and stuff like that, it's kind of similar. But my Uncle Mike believes that um, the angels in the Book of Revelations are not angels, that they are aliens. Okay. And, like, the, se like the seventh trumpet is, like, some sort of, like, I, I don't know, really. I'd have to have him explain it because the way he explains it is just so motherfucking convincing. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I feel you hear a lot of theories that are like aliens will reveal themselves like right at the right at the midnight hour of crisis, like to prevent us from blowing each other up, which I mean, if you watch the news, it could be any fucking day now. But um, if they were to be humans from the future. Ah, that's oh man. Now you're getting in. I don't know if you're getting in like event horizon territory with like yeah. how they travel so far and like what time is like within that time frame of travel, it's far beyond my comprehension. So I don't really know, but like, I think when you're talking to aliens, I think you have to kind of accept everything because yeah, it's unproven. Exactly. And I feel like because anything you, unproven, you kind of can't deny some things because that thing that you think is the craziest thing could actually turn out to be true. Exactly. I agree. I mean, 
to say that it's definitive, like even what people refer to as now when it comes to extraterrestrials, the greys or, you know, those long slender type ones. Or like the, I, like I just, the, I don't the think blonde that's what people. Yeah. And that's just what people perceive. I don't think that's, a, you know, who knows to say what they look like and what they could look like. We never know. We will never well, you know. You get a hint in the documentary. Behind... That's true. Hint. Um, and I don't want to like keep us going on because I do want us to talk about this movie because um, it does get weird. But to say things like, you know, they're one particular race or these things, the, the, I think we're adding our our own human experience to something we don't know, trying to uh, make it seem like it's similar to ours. Like, you know, like there's the race of the greys and all like, it was like, but to say that that's even the thing, cause race is a man-made construct. So it's like, you're now applying what man created for its own regard to well, that's what anybody does. a universal thing yeah, exactly. to the, the end. So I don't know. It's hard to say. I mean, space is a really, really weird thing. And, you know, in, in, when looking at the magnitude of infinite, you know, nothingness spinning in this ball of dirt in a vortex throughout infinite space, you know, dinosaurs lived 10 minutes ago in that, in that perspective. But it's, you know, we're so further in the future now, further in the past. It's like, who knows? It's very but much. What I do know, what I do know, is that Travis Walton experienced something in the woods back in the 70s. I'll tell you what he experienced. Aliens. What was it? <laughs> aliens. It was so, fucking aliens. Uh, how could, fucking you, how could you watch that movie <laughs> and then watch that documentary and tell and me not... it was anything fucking else? So I think this episode will be a little bit even more different in the sense that we're not going to like talk about this movie. I don't, I don't feel the need to, to really talk about this movie categorically. Or no, not. the I only think... thing I really do want to discuss is the, is the, the scene. Yes. 100%. Cause that scene is yeah. fucking phenomenal. And it's but also yes. different. Just, it's, it's different. It's so than... different from the movie. <laughs> no. And the, the scene that, that they have in the movie is different than the account that the man, that the actual, what's his name? Travis, Travis, Travis. Walton. Travis Walton, he gives a different recollection. Yeah. So maybe and we're going to be they... able to hear that on this episode. So we Perfect. are going to well, talk about what's uh, we're going to let this man talk. Yeah, but please. just so you guys know, this is the background of this whole movie in the in today's episode in the documentary. But on November 5th, 1975, a group of seven loggers, including Travis Walton, were walking in the Apache Sick Greaves National Forest, Arizona. And while they were driving home after a long day of work, they claimed to have seen a bright, glowing object in the sky. Now, this is where it says that they resembled a saucer-shaped UFO. Now, what we see differently in the movie... Now, it's important to know that the movie came out before the documentary. Yeah. So I need yeah, all okay. the listeners and, our, and us to remember that the documentary came after this movie. So the movie is pretty wild on how accurate it gets certain things. And it creeps me out. But I do have to say, I love the way that they show the light in the movie. Yeah. With it being like this bright orange. And they're all concerned that it could be a forest fire. But they or know it's what a that campfire. Looks like. Yeah. But they know what they like, look like. You just know? no one wants to say it. Right. Everybody, everybody is scrambling in that truck to make sense or reason of what they're seeing. And none of them, everybody, I mean, they had, you know, bonfire and someone's, someone's camping or there's a forest fire or there's, you know, a, a, a car that's overturned and that's the headlights. Mm -hmm. But that wasn't what it's, it was. There was so much rationalization happening. But right. Because of this intrigue. And also fear, right? There, you know, if there was an accident or a fire, they needed to get involved to prevent, you know, any destruction. Because what they were actually doing in those woods as loggers was cutting down dead trees to prevent any fires, like right. brush, you know, lightning and stuff strikes. Like that. Exactly. Yeah. Um, they, Which a lot so of people they did, think is anti-environment when it's actually very pro. Pro environment. environment. So it's like in Florida when we do controlled burns. 
Florida has a, a very that weird. Was a, that was a problem with the Maui fires. Was that there was yeah. so much overbrush that they were not they weren't allowed to to get out. They weren't allowed, and then that all you, you saw what happened with that. Yeah, yeah. So you have this group of guys, both in the movie and in the documentary, drow driving towards what they think to be something, but I think all of them kind of in the back of their minds know like this is something not right this is something weird and when they approach the i the being or item or ufo whatever you want to call it travis has to be the dumb one out of us all (laughs) because travis decides that he needs to get out of the truck because uh, and i don't know if you ever seen that meme where it's the picture of a ufo crash and it's the dude who makes all the funny music like uh improv music and it's like let me in i'm trying to fuck and it's just like <laughs> oh yeah oh, I don't think I've that's seen the it. moment i'll post it don't worry i'll share it but that is the exact as soon as that scene happens that's all i could think <laughs> about was like travis walton was trying to fuck, Let me whatever, in, I'm trying to fuck. <laughs> fuck whatever was going on in that flying saucer <laughs> Because why? I mean, I know the int- like I would be intrigued, but like I'm not gonna get out of the car. I'll would get you out guys? Of the car. Yes. Mm. <laughs> I'm like, get me out of here. Take me with you. <laughs> no, no, I no. wouldn't do no, it I because <laughs> because if uh, if if the movie Mothman prophecies tells you anything, staying in the oh, car <laughs> is the best solution you can have because. For yeah. some reason, that Mothman yeah. couldn't get in the car. Maybe the aliens couldn't either. I'd have stayed my ass. <laughs> He's got no disposable thumb. I'd have stayed my like, ass the fuck in the fucking they... truck. <laughs> yeah, that's just me, though. You know? But he, I mean, I don't think he was trying to fuck the aliens. He was in love with the T-1000 sister. Because <laughs> that's the that only actor I recognized. Fuck. That was the guy, the villain from Terminator 2. The Terminator, was the yeah. main Was the main friend. <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, um... But I will say this, despite like giving some background on what went down, I will say one of the best op- best opening songs I've seen in a while. Like it had that eerie, weird soundscape, uh, X Files vibe to it, and you just got this truck fucking gates out of hell, fucking rumming down. Um, yeah, just a really, I think very nineties. The director of this movie, yeah, did a really great job captivating it, the viewer with the first opening sequence. Because, like, oh, yeah. you know, you, you you get this, like, you know, you get the, the credits, and then it's, like, based on true events. And I think that back then that held a lot of, like, I don't know. I don't know. What, I'm trying to think of the word, but it held, it held its own. When you put, like, based on true events, back then it felt like, oh, my God, like, this is real, real. Like, versus, like, nowadays, like, it's so, you know, just slapped on all kinds of shit that it doesn't really mean anything anymore but i yeah, think look that... having a blind side exactly or <laughs> wow. paranormal activity like it's just like um it's just things like that i think ruin it where it's like you know it's overly yeah. dramatic and this movie isn't super dramatic i mean it is but it isn't like it's <laughs> it feels like one long dramatization that you're watching from like one it, of these yeah like, it does alien and shows. i mean the beginning yeah. of the movie they have that quote that kind of surmises basically in a philosophical way what it's i mean to deal with something like that and it said chance makes a plaything of a man's life so mm. to think that yikes the chance of fucking running into an alien yeah and then getting abducted i mean and then what fucking happens it. to you and everything afterwards it's just chance i mean they could have not gone yeah i mean or no one could have gotten out of the truck exactly they all saw it from the truck what more do you want to know? Unless one of them little critters gets out and, <laughs> and, and, and throws up a peace sign and was like, hey, y'all want to hang out? I'm not fucking getting out of the truck. If it's just hovering there minding its business, it's time for me to mind mine and get going. Get going. You know? Pat, your th- initial thoughts of everything? Of the whole movie? I didn't watch the no, documentary. No, just the initial. So. Um, no. <laughs> No, I, fuck the I, cop. I'll I, say I, that. Yeah, <laughs> that sheriff. The movie, the, that was pure. The Hoover. movie. It's, that was pure Hoover. <laughs> he wouldn't have believed it no matter no. what because he had uh, he had a record of zero. Uh, yeah, no, he was zero unsolved cases, and he couldn't solve this one. So instead of actually trying to suspend belief and believe people who passed a fucking a whole group passed a lie detector, lie, lie detector, and yeah. he still wants to go. That ain't it. 
It ain't aliens. <laughs> I'll get them eventually. Hey, man. Well, he never got them, did he? No. I there's, guess he did have it on people that don't, didn't he? <laughs> I hated there's that There's people, people that don't want to believe, and there's people, yeah. And then there's people that want to believe, like us. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 uh, the first time I saw this movie, I think was like, I was a teenager. Mm-hmm. I, I enjoy it. There's, it is, a, there is like two different parts of this movie is the scene that we're about to talk about. And then the movie itself that deals with the, you know, this, this guy is missing and, and they're trying to figure out what happened to him. Cause was look, he murdered. He was missing again, for five days. Yeah. And extensive searches were provided. Yeah. Because mind you, Listener, if you've never seen this movie, Travis gets out of the truck and then is then picked up by a beam of light and then is thrown to the ground and they think he's dead and they drive off. They leave him. They didn't want One to the yeah, dude, put it out there. They didn't, okay, they didn't want to, but they left. The dude left his best friend, Mark or Mike. Is it Mike? It's Mike. I remember. Leaves his best friend on the Boy, ground and then you. they eventually go back and he's gone. And he's yeah. gone for five days. And that is when this story unfolds with a cop who's purely on hubris, not going to believe anything they say, because he believes that something happened and they murdered Travis Walton. Yeah, which I mean, sure. Um, I'm sure in his line of work, he's seen a lot of people make up things to cover a murder of somebody. You know, I get it. Exactly, he has to exhaust course. all options. You know, people are fucking crazy. But they weren't. But what Pat is saying is is true, is... There is, there are, there's almost two movies in this film. There is yeah. the search and rescue. Where's Travis? Tell me what's going on. The town turning against each other. Relationships being torn. And then Patrick, tell us about the other part of the movie. That fi- <laughs> what the people want to hear about. The probing. The probing. <laughs> is that how they probe? Uh, dude, it's so good. Through the eye. I, I, dude. <laughs> dude. I'd rather it be. Well, in was it, his, it was in his. Uh, yeah, it was his eye. The the cum in his eye. Yeah. That's fucked up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Let's jerk off in our in our alien hands and rub it on his eyes as a disinfectant. Like what are they what are the just that's fucking what I ejaculate what's going on. foreign? And it's just like, here you go. Yeah. <laughs> the here, uh, the thing I do love about this movie to go eat a little this. <laughs> the thing I do love about this movie is that they don't explain what they did to him. Yeah. And the movie just ends with like, yeah, he has kids, he he goes on. on a normal life. What's yeah. the greater purpose? They don't, they, yeah. nothing, no one knows. Right. Usually when it comes to these type of movies, they go like, oh, now he, like now he's back on Earth. Like He's going to have like a fucking chest burst to come out of his chest or some <laughs> shit. You know? Nothing. They, nothing. Don't, they don't do that. And, it, and that's why, like to me, it's like the movie itself, yes, that scene is very iconic, but the other parts of the movie is kind of like, hits on a, on a it's, it is an alien movie, but it's also more of a drama of like, trying to figure out where this guy is and then yeah. when he comes back is like trying to figure out why why this like why he was missing for so long. To me it does feel like a like an X Files episode. Yeah. It does. And yeah. I think this movie came up before even X Files was even a thing. Mm. Let me search that check Probably the, I mean and can before, anybody tell us what do you what? know what year this movie came out? I can look Nine, it up real quick. Nineteen ninety three. Ninety three. This movie came out in ninety three. I think that's like it's maybe. around see the X Files. Maybe right around the start of X Files, or a little bit like a year Maybe or like, two before. I'd yeah. imagine. Hold on, I'm looking up. So while Pat's looking that up, um, I think like it's also very prominent to to tell everyone if you've not seen this and you've stuck around for some reason, the practical effects in this movie Ugh, are killer. Oh uh, yeah, I would. Yeah. So like you go. So like I, what this movie does amazing, and like again, I've never seen this movie. This is my first time watching this movie. Sean was livid that I've never seen this movie because he's like, Mike, it's literally the best alien abduction movie you'll ever watch. And I have to hold him to it. I agree. I am. I love the fourth kind, but this does God, it way better. So good. So th- when, when you, when Travis finally comes back, he calls, from a phone booth. Oh, this is the fucking movie. I hate that. Um, <laughs> miles away, he is buck ass naked, right? And he is like not ver- he's not verbalizing. He's you can clearly see that he's like lost weight, he's weak. And it's just like what the fuck has happened to him? And 
you know, the people like the town has gone crazy. There's people from out of town coming. There's news reporters, people out of the country to figure out what's going on, what happened to this man, etc. And the same year, sorry, uh, X Files came out the same year. Okay, oh, okay, how about that? It literally came, it, re- it aired literally a week after this movie That's was cool. released because it really <laughs> does. It really All does right. feel like an X Files <laughs> show, uh, like an episode. Um. But I will tell you this, you're literally, as the viewer of this movie, you're sitting on your couch edge waiting for the events of what happened to Travis to uh, you know, be known. You know, okay. was he uh, was he really abducted? Was he just lost in the woods? Why is he naked? Um, right. Why was this? What was the point of the maple syrup dropping off the, th- the thing? But you find <laughs> out why you like the movie I, does dude. so good at setting up things. Yeah, uh, it really when the, does. When the maple syrup showed up, I was like, what a fucking waste. Because <laughs> <laughs> here in the Horror Junkies, I'm like, you best guzzle that fucking maple syrup up, all right? <laughs> yeah, I've never drank Which... maple syrup and had a PTSD <laughs> flashback. Well, that makes me think, like, what the fuck was in his mouth that maybe it was sweet? Maybe. <laughs> nothing like, nothing about that it. experience looks sweet. <laughs> Listen, I'll also no. say this. I am I'm so pumped for this movie. I'm I like this is now going to be something that I make people watch. Um, going back to now practical I know, effects. Now I know what Emir uh, was talking about. <laughs> Listen, before There's you go on to practical effects, I got one person. <laughs> I got one person that I got a real problem with, and that's Mike's okay, wife. Go ahead, <laughs> Mike's wife. <Yeah>. What a <laughs> bitch! <laughs> You mean <laughs> at first? Best? At fir- hold on, hold on. At first, I was like, "Bro, what the fuck did he say?" Not do? Issa. If I said that, she'd reach. She's she'd reach she from would where? Literally, she'd reach from Colombia and fucking. Yeah. <laughs> I would never. I would. I would. I have never once in my life ever had a bad thought about your wife. She is one of my favorite fucking people. Like, like out of all my, out of all my homies that have like wives and girlfriends, me and her vibe on a whole other level of bouginess. <laughs> yeah. That I'm like, that's my girl right there. <laughs> that's yeah, that's uh, that's me. Me and her are both with our arms crossed. We ain't walking ten minutes. Get a car. <laughs> like that energy. I'm so about it. But this dude's wife, this Mike's wife, who looked like Adam Sandler with a wig on, um, literally came out to him after have, watching his friend get lifted blasted and abducted with his friends. He has no idea what he saw and his best friend's missing. What does she say? Well, where's the next pie check going to come from? And it's like, I don't know. Go down to the damn, go down to the Piggly Wiggly and get a goddamn uh, fucking grocery bagging job. I don't know what to tell you. Your man's distraught. Don't sit there yeah. and poke at him. Don't poke at him and then just, c- and then go to the town hall where everybody's ganging up on your husband. You're in the front row. She's ready with everybody for blood. else, and your husband has to come in She's and like, find yeah, you in the front what? row. Like, <laughs> yeah, my husband sucks. He murdered his best friend. We're poor. Someone get you know. It's like Give what me are money. You? She just caught, and the, all she did was nag and poke. <laughs> That's all she did. And you know what? The, the movie had a happy ending because he got <laughs> away from her ass. <laughs> yeah, he went and lived in the fucking cabin in the woods. He had a cool like, hat. He was everything. killing it to yeah. me. <laughs> getting away Tra- from that Travis, Travis finally comes so like there's a scene when Travis is when they gets found they take him to the hospital uh, Mike confesses to Travis that they left him and yeah. because of that like that kind of like ruins their friendship for a while and it takes like what almost 10 years 10 years yeah for them to like reconnect and I think be... it was 3 I think they said it was like what two and a half, three years oh, or something like be. that I don't know brother I, I don't, don't think know. it was 10 years but here's the question okay if I got picked up, and this is just uh-huh. me being a I'm, being a motherfucking realist, if I if my dumb ass sauntered out from the truck to investigate a big bull and orb, and I got lifted up and zapped with a fucking microwave or something, <laughs> and you two said, "What are we going to do?" We you have to think about yourselves. There's no sense in all of us getting abducted and fucking. Getting Neosporin come in the well, mouth and the eyes and brother, shit. Brother, I don't know who you talking, but that sounds like a fucking mm-hmm. hell of a time to me. No, nope, y'all I, should. My, just... my first thought is like, if he's fried, let's eat him. <laughs> <laughs> what is uh, you let's fucking try fruit, that fried you goddamn, Dylan. You Cronenberg motherfucker! <laughs> <laughs> I, don't eat me, but you can leave me. 
<laughs> you can leave me, but don't eat me. All right? For a split second, <laughs> there's going to be me and Pat are going to be like, we need to leave. And then we're going to smell there and be like, but does Dylan mm. smell like fried chicken right now? And we're going to go and, and like, take a little nibble. <laughs> and then we're going to leave. I'm like Kramer. We'll butter myself <laughs> up. Y'all yeah. look at me like Newman. <laughs> like, hey, bud. Like, oh, he's, is he dead? No, he's medium rare <laughs> <laughs> and then the aliens are like oh my god his friends are eating him let's leave this planet Fuck, let's leave this planet they're not sa- they're not worth saving they're freaks <laughs> they're freaks but talk Damn about it, a it, small it. town turning against like its own in a heartbeat well like, that makes they, sense they're they mormons immediately- yeah that's true they are Yes, yeah. Snow Lake, Arizona is a Mormon the town. The whole town was founded by Mormons. Yeah. Yep. And if we, and if there's one thing we know, Mormons don't give a fuck about other people. No. <laughs> they're, yeah. they're, we'll they're, knock they're at your gossipers. door. <laughs> Look, if you're a Mormon listening to this podcast, I'm sorry that that's the way you live. I'm Listen, terribly I, sorry. How I much? Doubt. What? What's the inflation on magic underwear these days? <laughs> Has Joe Biden gotten to y'all too? <laughs> you know they do have a whole like are, is it mormons or jehovah witness mormons the whole spaceship and they go to another planet so, no no that's uh that's scientology there's no no spa- no, no, no mormons no spa- believe no no, no, pla- no mormons believe in space jesus no they be- they believe in the hierarchy is is god is elohim joseph smith and jesus i thought you were gonna say elo cool joseph smith is, <laughs> is, is is higher up in the hierarchy than jesus and it's when you die, oh, if you if you lived a good life and you did all the no, all the Mormon shit, you get a planet with a woman, and then you get to populate that planet. But if you die, or there if it you're is. Bad, Space they Jesus. cut your dick off and they throw you in hell or some shit like that. I don't think there's Jesus shit. Christ. There's planets. Listen, what if you don't have you a said dick? planet? <laughs> how do you get like, to that planet? Anyways, the, how do you how do you do anything in Mormonism? It's all Mormon fucking religion it's all fucking aside. Weird. It all doesn't make sense. None of it. But we I... almost voted one in as president. <laughs> but we Remember almost Mitt did. Fucking Romney. He had magic underwear <laughs> no, but behind yes. the podium during the debate. That <laughs> he's Mormon as shit, dude. And we almost the, the country almost voted one in. Okay, well, <laughs> you know, Mormons. They yeah, we're not gonna go in. There's a whole thing about soaking that I have found out on the internet about Mormons and. Oh, Can't it's not what you think, so guys. Good. It's not. It's so much it's worse not. than what it is. It is the it's weirdest. So much worse. It is sucking. I'd rather be in a spaceship, getting getting yeah. getting the come eye than fucking soaking. <laughs> with Going someone back else. to that, segueing into yeah. that, him when he finally segue. recounts, uh, <laughs> recounts in the movie. Right when we finally yes. see what happens to Travis in the movie, he wakes up in the gooeyest grope glumpiest probably had to smell like old fire uh grease like uh fryer grease yes that's what it looked like um yeah little thing and then he like rips open the little fucking condom to come out of it and then you know we (laughs) we have like the no gravity scene and which is trippy as fuck dude that really is yeah was super trippy because it was almost dreamlike so it was. Yeah. It was almost dreamlike in a way. This is yeah, when another like movie was, starts. Yeah, he, he was fucking in that little that little thin cocoon, laying in what looks like cast like bacon grease in a cast iron pan. <laughs> like, and uh, he, then he floats. Yeah, and it is so surreal and dreamlike. And uh, ah, man, that's uh, that because uh, I and saw the music this movie, too is good. Yeah. I saw this movie for the first time three hours ago. <laughs> I've never, I've, I've never seen this. movie. Oh, really? You never seen it? Never seen it. And oh, that okay. scene and the way that I would love to see how they shot that because it looks so good. Yeah, it, it, it was uh, definitely uh, going to be and, suspension. But go ahead. Pat. Another thing I want to ask you guys: uh, so when he finds the dead body, do you not think that looks like a uh, Willem Dafoe? Yes. 100%. Oh my god, one hundred percent. That's fucked Willem up. Willem Dafoe right there. made a cameo in this movie. Yeah, yeah. half of them at least. Um, yeah, <laughs> but <laughs> talk about the like when he gets caught by the alien creature. One terrifying yeah. creature design. And then he's just yeah. dragged <laughs> through the fucking corridors of whatever the fuck thing he's in, wherever he's in. I gotta in. tell you, when I was watching this with Sav, she's like, why do they look like penises? <laughs> <laughs> because um, phallic I don't... symbol. <laughs> Pat, is that what? Is that what? <laughs> <laughs> Are you letting us in on a little secret, buddy? Is that is that yeah. what it looks like? <laughs> just, a, just a little like like a... 
<laughs> is that what it looks like? Because if so, dog, you gotta go see someone. About that. We're gonna fucking that do don't a sound show right. About... What would y'all have done? What would what would you have done in that situation? Accepted well, like my you're fate. fully conscious on the ship, and you're like trying well, to figure out what's going that on. Fucking, that, would you fight that back? That, that sheet they put over him. That's what got me. Yeah. Oh, oh God, yeah. dude. I, yeah, uh, but I mean, I would just start trying to swing and kick as much as possible. But I don't know if I would. Contractman, you would let it happen. Yeah, at no, that point, no. you're like, fuck it. No, you guys go, have gotten me. I put my hands up. I go, whoa, 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 fellas. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. It don't I'm have to be this way. <laughs> it, we don't have to do this. <laughs> listen here, just, brother. <laughs> listen, let me show you one thing that blows your mind. And if it blows your mind, <laughs> you want to do it. Dylan's going to do the mock. It's just Dylan doing this. What? <laughs> Their fucking heads explode. Close. I would be playing. Oh! I would play them. I would. I would grab my iPhone and play them. Joe Diffie's Pickup Man, and I would be like, "Don't tell me this shit ain't badass." And they'd be like, "Okay, this rocks. We'll let you live." It's either Joe Diffie, George Strait, or Limp Biscuit. I have to show them the best of humanity's yeah, creation. There you go. There you go. And it's like now this is DJ Lethal. He's about to bring it on. So you, you got it, and then they're going to be like, we've, DJ we, Rimbo, we're millions of light years away, and we're so advanced that we have that we have this kind of space light travel, but we have never heard anything like this in our <laughs> lives. Uh, Show us, d- introduce us to this Fred Durst that you speak of. <laughs> oh, right away, um, you fly on over to Jacksonville. I was going to say uh, when I. Ironically, like, you know, we brought back horrific jams and we chose uh, our buddies from Rhythm of Fear and I chose a song called Alien, alien Synthesis, not really n- re- like thinking of the fact that we were doing an alien episode and it's one of those fun things that happens. Just to one us of those always. fun things that happens. <laughs> and I, I hope you guys watched the video in their music video because there is a scene in their music video, Dylan, uh, when they're uh-huh. actually towards the end when they're like when um, of the song, there's a the pe- person being abducted. They do a little mouth open type thing that they, which is kind of similar to Fire in the Sky, when they put that weird mouth thing on him and they do the fucking you know, honey bun glaze all over his face. Yep. Um, there's a similar scene in their music video, and I thought that was really cool. Uh, we well, you know what we well, you know what's fuck. fucked up. You know what's fucked up. You picked the wrong song. What song should I have picked? They have a song oh, called boy. Fire in the Sky, <gasps> and it's about <gasps> Well, so is Alien Synthesis. So how was I supposed to know? Well, if you're a true, if you're a true rhythmer, like I, <laughs> you will know that the 2016 release Maze of Confusion, which is, if anybody here has never heard Rhythm of Fear, oh you have God. done yourself a An fucking injustice. massive disservice. There's no band doing crossover better than Rhythm of Fear today on the Listen, planet, and I will back no, that a yeah. hundred thousand percent. That band fucking rocks. And the they fact riff, they that riff. not everybody is just trying to pile on that band because they fucking rock so hard is beyond <laughs> fucking mean. <laughs> not to that, mean, mean they have like their music videos. They have a Hellraiser themed music video. How is like, Yeah, the, they're a like, fun fucking band. They're incredibly talented. And they fucking have, they have so many groovy fucking riffs, dog. And like oh, Logan, yeah. Logan's a, Logan's a, a psychopath. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, the, but him, he's on the drums, man. And as a drummer, like I love, love watching Logan, you know, I mean, he's drummed for other bands too. You know, he, he, yeah. he's, a, he's a, he's a big, he, he's been all around, man. And a lot of these, uh, oh my God, I'm listening, I'm going into a rhythm. Of fear, <laughs> I got to stop. Yeah. But they have a song fire in the sky. Um, Check it out. Yeah, check it out. Check it out. Um, so what I want to do next is I want to play. Yeah, tell some me about audio. this documentary. So the documentary does a really good job. When you watch the documentary, you are watching live interviews of the people being portrayed in the movie, and when you see the like re- when they recount the things that happen, it's like it's wild. The fact that. Um, they were, you know, they were categorized as murderers and everyone in the town turned against them. They had a polygraph. They all agreed to do the polygraph and they all passed it. I mean, it was well, and mind you, the actual person who did the polygraph was is in this documentary. And yeah. he says like, he's like, listen, we asked four questions or five questions. They were well vetted questions and everyone passed. They did not 
in 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 regards to the polygraph, they did not hurt or murder Travis Walton. Excuse me. But when they asked the question about was a Travis Walton abducted by aliens, and they all said yes, they all passed. And it's yeah. just it's it's fucking wild. And one of the things I love is that Travis Walton is a part of this um documentary and he's also in the movie i don't know if you guys knew that he plays a town citizen in the movie oh I don't um, really yeah he's in, he's in the he's in well, this he's did... in the actual um uh, mm-hmm. the courtroom so he's one of the like background characters but he is cre- credited in the film when i first watched this movie i didn't know it was based on true events or whatever well oh, really? hold on to your butts buddy because in yeah. this documentary travis walton agrees to do hypnosis and hey. in regards to that I have a special clip of his hypnother- uh, hypnotic session where he recounts what happened to him. And listener beware, <laughs> Shit. you are in for some creepy weird stuff. It's like the fourth kind. Yeah. So let's just get this loaded up to play. Let's go on. Um, what he does while we're waiting for this to load up, um, he literally goes into detail. And this is the first time of him actually coming out and speaking to terms of what happened to him. No one right. else. I mean, he had, ta- had told his story to other people. He had shared it with his loved ones, but he had never actually formally came out and told people what happened to him. And I don't know why the fuck my audio clip isn't working and I'm getting upset. Oh, um, boy. I'm getting a little heated because I made sure everything worked before this well, episode. And what all So so now knowing what we know culturally that this is, you know, the government has said that there are ships that come mm-hmm. to our planet that are not from our planet. Does this add more uh legit uh Well it's the government, man. Legitimacy? I mean Yeah, well this, I mean the, the story itself, does it add more legitimacy like legitimacy? to what happened to Travis. Do we, you know, do we buy into more of like what happened to him in now because of the days that we live in? I, that is, I'm confirmed. sure for some people it does. I'm sure for some people okay. it has a little legitimacy, but for me, I just needed to watch the movie. Yeah. That's it. And then the documentary needed, solidified right. it for me as well, that that is that they're not making that up. You can't do it. Nobody holds right, right. a story that airtight amongst five people, and then you all for pass years a polygraph test, and you have one of the the foremost experts in the country come and do it, and then he's like, "Look, sir, one of the 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 crazy mean guy, his is a little inconclusive. He's all <laughs> over the place, but the other four, well, they the, all passed, and then they still right. refuse to believe." Him. Yeah, but still. exactly. I yeah. don't need some government body telling me what to believe and what not to believe. I'll tell you <laughs> no, that. Of right course, now. I'll tell you right. that right now. But yeah. no, I agree with Dylan. Listening to their stories yes. and seeing that they they've held true over the years, it's baffling. And I got it to work, so here we go. Yes, let's go. I was looking up at the light shining down on me from the ceiling. I, I believed that, that I was in the hospital. I, I didn't make any attempt to move because of the pain I was in. My, I couldn't focus my eyes very well, but I looked beyond the top edge of the thing that was right across me, and I saw two men leaning over me that had kind of underdeveloped features and uh, no hair of any kind. I didn't even think. I just lashed out, and uh, I grabbed a, 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 a tube clear piece of glass or something and I, I tried to break off the end to get something sharp to, to defend myself but they didn't try to approach or, or anything they just left they just ran out real fast in the corridor outside and they went to the right and I went to the left it was a very narrow corridor and it was dimly lit everywhere I went into this room this, you could even see the stars Thank you. 
was also just kind of, except they were round and uh, an oval shape, and they were really shiny, like uh, chrome. I was let down the hallway in, in a room with three other people that were like myself. I sat in the chair, and I tried to get the people to talk to me that were there, and they didn't have things on their head, and, and so I thought that maybe they could hear me, but they, they wouldn't have to either. They put a, a deal over my face. It was kind of like an oxygen mask, and it was kind of clear plastic. I looked up at the ceiling, which was just, it was all solid light. There wasn't any light fixture on it. And I was last that we went, and I, I went to sleep. So, yeah. Yikes. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> it's it's fucking weird to hear this man. Like cuz think about it. Yeah. And like believe in hypnosis if you don't, but like if you watch Criminal Minds, there are things called cognitive interviews where people who suffer tremendous amounts of PTSD sometimes don't truly remember what they experienced and they have to go into these weird like subconscious state of mind to like relive those like you know those me- memories that they've pushed down and buried and it's just when i first listened to this on well the- especially something like that fucking happens to yeah you, you know? like you like you kind of just need hypnosis to you, do the and then you, you, see, do the you down, see it, you see it a lot you see it a lot in sexual assault cases with women yeah uh, you see it yeah. where they they can't remember and then people discredit them because they can't remember it's not that they can't remember. It's that what happened to them is so traumatic that their brain does what it can to to prevent them from remembering. Them. Yeah. To re- yeah, to remember them. And it's like I'm yeah. not gonna I'm not gonna put what I went through. I'm not gonna put it on the same ladder as that. I'm just saying my own experience, um, like my cancer experience. I barely remember most of it, just because I you know right. your brain doesn't want you to remember the 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 days that felt like weeks. Yeah, laying in a hospital bed, being pumped full of poison, and then just being god awfully sick, and just fucking being poked and prodded. I felt like I was in a fucking alien UFO, fucking being poked yeah. and prodded constantly. And like, I don't. I, I, people ask me about it, and I tell them, you know, oh, well, you know, wasn't that bad? Yeah, it wasn't that bad. I only right. think that because my brain fucking your brain helped me pushed out it and did me a solid there. Like... Yeah, so it's like you know, and again, not comparing mine to the other thing I brought up whatsoever, but yeah. I definitely. I I think that hypnosis, I think it's credible. I think it's credible because trauma like that gets, it it doesn't go away. It gets, it just gets stored in a different place and to access something like your subconscious to be fired. (laughs) Right. And to access that subconscious, you got to be put in a state where you're half in half out to get those memories, to get to that place where all that, where all that shitty, terrible, horrifically, traumatic shit happened like you what else could you do you know you can't you can't just make a per that's why with people with anxiety and shit they're like i ain't got nothing to worry about it's like it's not you it's what's back here that is causing your body to react you don't even know what's happening so So, pat sorry dylan you gotta no 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 no, no. go ahead i was gonna say because dylan dylan and i watched this documentary so we kind of were prepared to listen to this having never watch this documentary and having yeah. watched fire in the sky now and listening to this like what are your thoughts i kind of wish that was in the movie <laughs> right. right yeah because like the- that's way more that's way more uh intense yeah. than you know i mean granted the fucking movie that part is also very intense <laughs> yes. but well, yeah. it's very much it's it's theatrical yeah that right there felt uh more real yeah more like believable more fucking like wow dude fuck yeah and it and leads what? it leads to other theories about aliens because there's right not just grays but there's like i mentioned mm-hmm. earlier the blonde hair well yeah human yeah, looking that, and, aliens so it's to like mm-hmm. this to think to yourself well also in the movie what i loved about the movie that i've never seen another anything involving extraterrestrials i've never seen this done and that is the gray skin with the black eyes those are suits. Yeah. Yeah. Those are that like was cool. space. Ex- those are like planet exploring suits for those aliens. So when people, when you say like, oh, I, I had an encounter with a gray, you had, right. you, you may, it's possible yeah. now that the, it's now said, that I've seen that I've never had, yeah. and I've never even had that thought that that's a possibility, but uh, that could just be something in a suit. Yeah. And with yeah. the, with the blonde Norwegian type aliens that people say, 
Now he's saying in oh. his in his <laughs> hypnosis that he saw one. Yeah. And it grabbed oh, took yeah. him by the yeah. arm and he had a helmet on. So there's two different types of aliens that people see on one fucking ship. I think so, what I think is really cool about this clip is the fact that I mean again, we don't know how much has been edited out and we don't know how like you know f- you know continuous this was. Uh, it sounds like it was one coherent thought. He doesn't like he speaks in a way that makes you feel like this is a person recounting something right from the memory like it's not fast paced it doesn't sound rehearsed like it's there's pauses no. there's breaks in what his words and he's like you know and there was people and I called out to them but I don't know if they could hear me like it, it's just the way he describes things and the way the reason why I bring that up is because there's one last clip it's very short it's like 35 seconds and it's talking about someone else after hearing his recount so just real quick There you go. Fucking what? Yeah. So this yeah. dude recounts what happened to him, and it's almost similar, or he said exactly the same as what another person went through that was not published. So, and mind you, people, right. this is 1978. This is yeah. not the digital age that we know of today where information is so readily available at the tips of your fingers. So it's just, it's like, it's if you're a skeptic, and you really don't believe in aliens and you don't believe nothing, that's totally fine. But I think what what and what I love about like Shane and Ryan Bagara, that we were talking about them earlier with their channel and what they've done, even though Shane is a skeptic, he is open to the idea. Because he doesn't know. And I think that's like yeah. when you listen to these people recount. Now, of course, there are some people out there that make up fictitious stories that get paid and all the yada yada yada. But and unfortunately that kind of degrades these stories of like what people actually go through because i honestly right. believe that... travis was abducted by aliens and was experimented on for five days and was brought mm-hmm. back to this earth after they were done with him i truly believe this man's story oh of course and the thing is too is like nowadays when it again with the government releasing that you know there are ufos and stuff like that how many videos have we seen now that have been seeing that they have seen alien signs and we have to go with our minds like is this a hoax or is this that legit thing yeah you know when the legit thing does happen are we going to go back to that skeptical mind exactly. of like because there's so many examples of it being fucking you know not real mm-hmm. well, i think what was it recently in uh in peru right or something like that there was a they found like predator looking aliens or something yeah. like that oh i've never <laughs> i didn't hear that at all i did not yeah. hear that it's in, yeah, That's insane. It's in your um, local grocery store that were vampire boy he still lives <laughs> <laughs> yeah. on the cover of, uh, of uh, Esquire man, or whatever the Sun yeah. Times or whatever those uh, tabloid fucking um, yeah newspapers are. There is one person that I want to mention from that documentary who, much like the sheriff, I could not stand, and that was Mister <laughs> Philip Class. Um, not Philip Glass the movie composer (laughs) of such hits like Candyman. Uh, (laughs) Philip Glass rocks. Uh, Philip Glass. Yes, he does. Um, I don't want to get into him because he sucks, but long story short, he was pretty much trying to debunk all the guys, the like trying to debunk them. And apparently he followed one of the members, the youngest person, because in the, in the group, there was a kid about 17 who they hired, they brought on to make money. Yeah. And when they interviewed him, he said, yeah, this Philip Class guy who was basically going around and like trying to debunk and disprove alien life and all this, that and the other uh, followed him around and tried to offer him ten thousand um, dollars to cut. basically say it was all fake and say it was a hoax. And ten thousand dollars in 1975, 76. That's a lot of fucking Shit. money. 
a lot. But of, the guy yeah. turned it down because he's like, I, I can't, like, yeah, I'm not going to do it. You know, these are like honest, Morally, hardworking yeah. fucking people from that would have changed town. that man's life. That would have it would have changed, changed his life. His there's life. no reason. Like, there's if it was fake, there's no right. reason to take the money and run. No. You know, there's no fucking exactly. reason to like not do that. But he did it. It's in like one that adds credibility no. to the entire story, but also it adds the theory that Philip Class um, was uh, not a CIA or NSA agent, but he was hired. He was actually an a- he was an alien. He, no, he was hired <laughs> by the NSA or the CIA <laughs> to uh, to discredit the story because yeah, back right. then the government had a fear that if the, that if America or the planet found out about the existence of aliens then people would no longer have a allegiance to their country, but to the planet itself. So future now look at us. Yeah. So here's, so <laughs> the people, people uniting and, and being for the planet and not, you know, fucking borders that, that people draw that drew on a fucking map once. Um, they, yeah. bad for business. That's bad for business. Bad for business. You can't have that. And Listen, now they're, and, and now they're willingly I'm telling pissed. us all this alien stuff. And now they're willingly telling us like, yeah, but and no one gives a shit. No one cares because we all <laughs> Everyone's know. Everyone's like, yeah. no, that, yeah, we've all known. And two, exactly. there are other fucking more important things going on in this world that yeah. are like that we are. We about. see you weird. <laughs> we see you. <laughs> we see you, government, off. trying to distract us. <laughs> the aliens like, yeah, are no exactly. longer a fucking thing that we care about. We're just like, mm, yeah. How about the high housing crisis? How about uh, yeah. job market stability? Um, how like, about hey, income hey, look, inequality? Distractions. <laughs> how about me look, not having to pay? Aliens are real. How about me not having the? If I didn't have insurance, fucking not, you know, having to pay half a million dollars in medical expenses. Like, yeah. How about, how about how about not paying more than you'll ever make <laughs> in your life to live? Like, I just love. I love it. I love it. It's just yeah. so it's, it's like a fun time. Congressional hearing about aliens. It's like, you know what? We all kind of knew that they existed. Uh we didn't really need this. Um yeah. how about you do something about, you know, all the other things we have going wrong in this country they, and the world? What are they nah, telling us? What are they telling us instead? Yeah. What are they telling us that M Night Shyamalan didn't tell us like twenty something years exactly. ago? <laughs> exactly. What is what are they telling us that, that 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 man did not already tell us? They're here. And Mel Gibson's <laughs> pissed about it. All right. Now, I'm like, yeah, no, but it makes all the sense <clears throat> in the world. Really. When he said that, yeah. but I also, what breaks my heart is that this interview was done way before the current debriefing of the government and aliens. And he said, I hope one day that this comes to light and that the government does say something. And now, and I think wow. that he got what he wanted, but he not really. Because it's like, no. hey, they're real. Who cares? No. Like, we're so bad off. <laughs> yeah. We Fuck. have other things to worry about. You know, like, this is all not I think the thing about we should is, be talking about. All I think about is Travis Walton sitting on his Lazy Boy recliner eating popcorn. And it's like that meme. It's like that scene from um, with Leonardo DiCaprio. And he goes, uh-huh. And he whistles at the TV and points yeah. at it. It's, that was, right there, Travis, right there, right that was Travis Walton when this Could you congressional imagine? hearing happened. And he was like, what the fuck? There it is. I, 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 there it is. You called me crazy. Dude, aliens. You all laughed at me. You <laughs> laughed at me. Aliens were like. Now who's laughing? They're Listen, they're going to tell them about us. Like, get ready, dude. Like, they're going to tell us. They, they're going to tell them that we exist. Finally, like, they're going to say it. And then it's like when you make food, like when you make dinner for someone and they're kind of like, it's okay. Like you take them to your favorite <laughs> restaurant and they're like, eh, it's okay. Eh. Like, you know that feeling where you're kind of, uh, like, let better. down, and you're like, well, what do you mean? Anytime okay? I take someone to all That's Gardens. how the aliens must have felt, dude, <laughs> to, like, finally, finally be out in the open, and everything is so bad that we don't care. No, I, I mean, that's, see it now. We don't, we don't not care about them, you know? But no, we just don't care about them right now. They're not right number, now. They're not on my yeah. top ten. They're not on if the they, top ten right now. If they want to go and, like, you know, zap a couple of politicians and be like, Hey, we're the good guys. Like, yeah, now we care. Like, hell yeah. Aliens yeah, for yeah. president. Yeah. You know, hell yeah, Kane brother. Kodos for president dog. <laughs> Fucking I'll take Simpsons. it. <laughs> uh, I can just see it now. They were, they were adorning themselves in their lavish tunics. 
they're like getting ready oh, to yeah. come out. Get, they're like giddy. They're like, we're coming out. Here we come. And they <laughs> dripping say like, from head to toe. <laughs> and the, in the finest walk. garbs their planet has to offer. <laughs> and then and Carl said, opens the win- open the door and goes, guys, I really hate to be the bummer of bad news here, but they really just don't care. And then like they're crying. They like the, the alien. <laughs> it's is like a producer with corner. his headset. He's like, all right, guys, you're on in five. And hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. What was that? What was that? Oh, oh, really? Yes. Oh, we. I just sent them out to all release. Right. Oh no. Uh, can't you, you, you've been bumped. <laughs> <laughs> like bumped? it's like being bumped off a late night show. Like you've been bumped <laughs> for what? I don't know. Climate change, civil unrest, <laughs> Maui fires, fucking submarines blowing up, <laughs> fucking uh, genocide in China. Fucking you. Fucking take a goddamn pick. You take a pick about what's more important. The water is a hundred degrees. It's a jacuzzi in Miami. <laughs> the fucking coral is bleaching. <laughs> and now, like, most that's importantly, bad. most importantly, they're making the freaking frogs gay. <laughs> it's, it's making the frogs gay. Pizza fries <laughs> price went up. Fucking, it's just like it's bass hysteria. And fucking, I'm sorry, y'all. Y'all gonna y'all either gotta have a. We'll care if you have a pro if you have a solution to the problem. If you don't have yeah. a solution, come back in 15 years when we're all dead or we figured it out. Yeah. You know, but, um, most likely dead. <laughs> most likely dead. It's gonna be like most AI. They're not gonna fucking aliens are gonna visit the planet like after it's everyone's long gone. And all that's left is controlling. All everything. that's left is Haley Joel Osment. <laughs> <laughs> fucking, that's all that's left. Oh god damn it! Um, but yeah, I think I believe this dude, and I think yeah, everyone yeah. here on the show believes you believes Travis without Walton. a doubt. Um, but also we are the people that want to believe. That's true. And I really, not, really would love to hear from people who don't. And I yeah. would love to hear what your thoughts are. I don't are. think they listen to this. Type of I don't think I'm stuff. invested one know. way or the other. I think I'm a neutral to it at this point, whether they do or yeah. don't. Okay. You know, I, I mean, they've got to prove it by abducting see... me and coming in my eye. But yeah, I, I, I don't necessarily, <laughs> you know, one way or the other, you know, it's, it's groovy to me, man. Yeah. I just would like to know, like, you know, hearing what he has to say, listening to that. Thinking, you know, taking into consideration the fact that the story has stayed the same after all these years, yeah, what they, what their thought process could be, um, but no, guys, you know, if you stuck around for this whole wacky do episode about aliens and strange things that go bump in the night, um, tell us your stories. I really do. I, I, I promise you that we really are interested in hearing about the weird things that you've encountered, or maybe someone in your family has encountered and has like it's tradition to share these stories every year and you guys have a, a gathering we're not going to make fun of you i promise like it can be as crazy as you want it to be you know it you're telling uh, you know three guys who listen to a podcast called this might sound crazy where literally my doppler ganger heavy breeze into a microphone and talks about poops and farts and weird <laughs> things um so definitely send Skunk that stuff ape. over to us uh, tell Fucking us, your, skunk ape. yeah. <laughs> tell us if you guys, you know, if you watched Fire in the Sky, if you've, you know, if you've read about the Travis Walton abduction, or you know, bring new facts, maybe things that we didn't talk about that you you know more about, and you're you're very interested into this case, and you just kind of want to, you know, enlighten or us. Other uh, other alien abductions, like other oh, yeah. uh, other stories from other uh, people, yeah. You know, or really if you good, saw a chupacabra in the Puerto Rico as a child, like Pat. <laughs> Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that's was... You told or, me you that know, story. You know, and I got you know. I got chupacabra because you said goat, that's, but I'm like, that's, that's it. all I got from it too. Yeah. And I was like chupacabra, baby. <laughs> the um, boy out there. And just to sh- just to shout out Meth Syndicate, like one of his famous shirts, I got my dick sucked by Mothman behind the Bass <laughs> Pro Shop, or, or like I, one one variation. Um, but tell us, guys, share us your thoughts on what you think goes on in the world. Thinks thoughts about fire in the sky and the Travis Walton story. As always, we are down to watch the weird things that you guys want us to talk about. So please, we we eagerly await your um, your requests for movies and books and comics and video games, whatever it is in the horror world that you want us to talk about, watch, consume on this podcast. Because even though this show is something for us to do for fun, we do this for all our listeners and we want to make sure that we're generating content that is something you want. Um, and if you're new to the show, welcome. Uh, hope you like it. Subscribe, tell your friends, tell your mom, 
Um, make sure you buy some snacks. Definitely tell your mom. Definitely tell your mom. <laughs> um, and then make sure you follow and, us on and, Instagram and the TikToks and YouTube and the Skitterboard and all the other social media things that are out there. Um, but other than that, give us new things. Give us new things to torture uh, Dylan with. Yeah, oh. yes, we <laughs> love doing that. Um, uh, but as or you always, don't have to, or you don't have to. Uh, <laughs> You don't, don't listen to Dylan. Don't listen to him. Do Come it. on, man. Um, as <laughs> always, guys, this has been a wacky, strange ride on the Horror Junkies podcast. And again, we do this out of a love for the genre and a love to share our stories with you all. So follow us, subscribe, leave us a comment, leave us a review. But as always, I'm Mike. I'm Pat. And I'm Dylan. Stay weird and search the cosmos for the unknown. <laughs>